last winter, I made a video where I was out in the woods and I was showing off a number of items that had been given to me or were things that I had purchased. And one of the items I had shown was the FlexFire 4 from Wicca Technologies. And I'll put a link to that video up in the corner. Now, it was just an introductory. I was just playing with it for the first couple of times. I've used it quite a few times since, but it was not a review. I've still yet to do a review on the FlexFire 4. Well, the FlexFire 4 is actually part of a full system known as the FlexFire 6 Premium. And today I'm going to bring you the second part of that system, which is the FlexFire 6 wood stove from Wicca Technologies. If you're interested in hearing more about this stove, keep watching. Okay, before I begin, there's a few things I want to mention to start with. The Flex Fire 6 Premium Stove, which includes the Flex Fire 4 stove, was sent to me for testing review by Wicca Technologies. I did not buy this with my own money. So, uh, <laughs> there's a lot to show you, really. There, there is too much to show you in this video. So this video is going to be a preview of the FlexFire 6, meaning the six-sided version of this stove. Because the, in addition to being a four-sided version, an extra plates to turn it into a six-sided version, it has multiple other plates that will allow it to use with gas, alcohol, esbit, and other fuels. I've used it with charcoal very effectively. So it's way too much to show you in one video. In fact, I think likely when I go to the full review of this it'll probably be a three-part video series I'll try to keep each one of them short enough that you can see just the one that you're most interested in but long enough to give you the detail without being too long if I had shown you the whole system so what I'm going to do is I'm going to disassemble this take it down and put it back it's in, in its packaging that it comes with put it back together for you I'll show you some of the other components but not how they go together we'll put this together and I'll talk a little bit about it in terms of its construction and design then we'll get a fire going in it so again before I begin I'm going to put some of the specs on the screen and in the show notes below because I don't have them written down here right now to give you and I'll also put the link to the Wicca Technologies website where you can see more about this stove as well as the purchase prices and everything else. It is made in Germany and the prices will be listed in euros and what you'll find when you get there is that the, there is actually three packages. There's the stove known as the FlexFire 4, there's the FlexFire 6 and then there's the FlexFire 6 Premium which is what I have here. So this has all the options to put together two stoves and some variations on each of them. So when it arrived, this is the package I got. Now I have to say this does have some weight. This is all the stoves, all the components of all the stoves in this nice cotton sack. I was a little confused at first why it had two strips of Velcro, but you'll see why in a minute. Uh, maybe you've got it figured out already. I don't think the logo is going to show up well on camera. But that's the logo for Wicca Technologies and the FlexFire stoves. But, boy, when I opened it up, holy smokes. Now, there is a manual. The manual is in many languages. It is pictorial as well as written word. And it is excellent. It really does a good job of showing just about everything you need to know to put this stove together in its various configurations. A few things that I had to figure out on my own. A few things that I had to see what I could find in terms of videos. And, uh, yeah, it, uh, there are things that weren't shown that you can do with this stove that uh, I may be able to add to the, what the manual has as well. So there is a lot of stuff inside of here. We won't be using nearly half of it today, but look at the plates. Bewildering display of plates. To start with, and I'm going to lay things aside that I will be using and that I won't be using. These are pot stands, pot stand, crossbars, whatever you want to call them. They serve two functions. One is to act as a pot stand to hold the pot on top of the stove, just off of the top a little bit. They also act to hold the stove together as locking bars in the base, and I'll show you what I mean. I'll put those off to the side. Now, this is the base plate or the ash pan for the FlexFire 4. That's the one that appeared in the video from last winter. I'll put that aside. There is the fire grate for the FlexFire 4. And this is a grill for the top of the FlexFire 4. Thicker in me thicker metal, so it'll re you know uh, resist a lot more warping. So that, if I wanted to do a hamburger or whatever, not a big stove, but... Uh, a very effective stove issue if you go back and look. These are accessory plates that I won't be using today either. And then we get into the components for the FlexFire 6. So once again, for the six-sided version, we have the ash pan that goes on the bottom. We have the fire grate that goes in the, just above the ash pan. 
and we also have another grill for grilling on top of that. I'm going to put the grill aside because I won't be using that today either. Now, there are a lot of plates that go together to make this stove. And it, you're, if, when I first looked at it, I, you know, I tried to do it without instructions. And I said, you know, is there a system here that would make it easier? And there is, and it's quite self-evident. And when I went to the book, it confirmed it. Number one, that obviously is the feed port at least one of the feed port plates because there is another one that has a different configuration and you can see it's a top feed meaning top near the top of the stove not in through the open part of the stove but near the top very similar to what the bush box from bushcraft essentials looks like and how i know that this is the front of the stove is there's a little symbol cut in right here that's the omega symbol and what that means is this is the last plate you're going to use to put the stove together so that's the last plate it also has their logo etched into it. By the way, if, if you're seeing the colorings on the sides of this material, it looks a lot like colorings you'll see on titanium, and that's for a reason. This is unique, as far as I know, in all the stoves that I've ever done any work with or even heard of, that this is a stainless steel titanium alloy. And the idea is that it gives you the best of both qualities. It gives you the heat resistance and the non-corrosiveness of titanium and stainless steel, but matches some of the weight or reduces some of the weight of a pure stainless steel stove and uh, yeah it uh, and the stainless steel helps it from warping as well so it's a nice combination of metals but uh, more on that later so that's the last plate I'll you put that aside for a second now there is a first plate go through the plates as I have them here here it is how do I know that this is the first plate down in that same corner is an A and that A see if I can get it back in the camera that A stands for alpha so this is plate number one this is the one that everything else is added to there's also some of the you know necessary warnings about hot and don't burn yourself and how to use a stove that are imprinted with laser on this plate as well so that's the back then you just start assembling the stove to each side i'm going to be adding two of these common plates they're all pretty much the same and as i do this oh that's the wrong way sorry Again, a little bit of a learning curve and paying attention to what you're doing. Um, as I do, one of the things I noticed right away is the precision with which this has been machined. Um, it just, you know, it, it, the, the design is interesting and the thought that went into it is just amazing. But also the quality of manufacture. Uh, I, you know, I've had a number of fires in these stoves, not enough to give you a, fu a full review, but enough to know that this has shows no warpage whatsoever, which is really cool. And it just goes together the same every time. So now what you can see is I have five of the six sides together. Now it's time to put in the two bottom plates. So it starts with the ash pan. The ash pan really and you'll notice that there's one side of the ash pan that does not have a notch and of course that's going to face forward so where the last the out or the omega plate goes and it just kind of drops into place it just doesn't take much to hold that one into place so we'll start there then add the burn plate or the uh, floor of the of the stove again it has one side without a notch i have to open it back up to put this one in and there are notches to match on all the plates. And I bring those together, hold it like this, and we're almost done. I'm just trying to find a piece of level of ground to work with. I want you to be able to see what I'm doing. And then the last plate, the Omega plate goes on. And the Omega plate goes on, it takes just a little bit of fiddling to line up the notches. You have to kind of open it up a tiny bit to get them to line up. The deer flies are all over me right now. I'm trying to do this backwards so as I lean over it so that I can show you it going together. Usually it's not this hard, but between going backwards and the deer flies. Come on, you can go together easier than this. It always does. Ouch! Got bitten on the ear. There we go. Okay, so now it's together. But it's not locked in place yet. And that's where these pot stands come in. Because in the bottom of the stove, from front to back, from the omega to the alpha, or the alpha to the omega, it doesn't really matter which way you go, are slots right down here at the bottom. And these two stands, or crossbars or pot stands have notches in the ends that match so you literally just slide it right through the bottom 
And this is going between the ash pan and the burn plate. It comes out the other side. There's a little bit more work to putting this one together than there is the FlexFire 4. And then it drops into place, and the same thing on the other side. Oops, jeez, dear fries. All right. And then it drops into place. All right, now the stove is locked together. Now, would I drop this from a height and expect it to stay together? I'd like to say it would. I'm not going to try because it will go all over the place if it does fall apart. But it's effectively very well locked together. It certainly will not come apart in use. In fact, what I found is the more weight that's down inside in terms of wood, the, they push down on those two crossbars and just further lock them into place so the stove won't come apart. And across across the top, that's a big stove. Look at that. That is a huge stove. This is like a small campfire. It's bigger than necessary for most of the cooking I do. So most of the time I'd probably be carrying the FlexFire 4. But, you know, occasionally you're going to be cooking uh, maybe a larger meal for a number of people or you wanted to use this as a barbecue and you could I have uh, you know you would use you might want to use the flex fire six and here are the two pot stands and there's a number of grooves different spots uh, ouch dear flies there's a number of grooves all over the place for variations on how this goes together so they can go together in the top all right so here's what I'm going to do I'm going to put this in the fire pit and I'm going to get a fire started in it and hope that the fire <laughs> dries off some of these deer flies because they are killing me right now. Oh, last thing I wanted to show you. I mentioned there was two pieces of Velcro. Why, why two strips of Velcro? Well, if you're using the Flex Fire 6, then you would close it over and use that piece of Velcro. But if I'm using the Flex Fire 4, I won't be using these huge plates. Then I could fold it into a smaller package that would fit just the Flex Fire 4. And then the package only becomes this wide. That's why there's two pieces of Velcro. All right, now I'm going to get it in the fire pit, get some kindling in it, and see if I can't get a fire going. I'm going to intentionally make it a little bit smoky to start with, see if I can't drive off some of these deer flies. All right, so I have the Flex Fire 6 set up in my fire pit here. Just a nice, safe base to work with, with a little bit of wind protection, although there is no wind today. Uh, even with that ash pan underneath, I still like to have a fire-safe surface under because there's still quite a bit of heat that's transferred down. Yeah, it could be as simple as a piece of tin foil if your forest floor is nothing but duff, but it's, uh, it's always good to have something else underneath the stove, stone, uh, mineral earth, like I have inside the fire pit, or a piece of tin foil or something. Okay, to get this going, I'm going to make it super simple on myself today. Nothing too fancy or nothing fancy at all because uh, I want to get rid of these deer flies. So in the base of the stove, I put a little bit of birch bark. And then as you can see inside, there are just a few twigs off of uh, a local or a local a nearby spruce tree. So I'm just going to use a piece of birch bark like that. Use it like a taper to reach down inside and catch on to the other birch bark that's down there. And everything is a bit damp because, of course, what happened, the reason I can even do this today is uh, because we had a lot of rain yesterday. And that rain um, kind of brought down the, the fire risk and uh, the burn ban was relaxed for at least today. It won't last too long because the dry temperatures are sure to return and the burn ban will be back on. So if I can get that down to the original birch bark. All right, there we go. Now, the reason I'm doing it this way, there's a couple of ways I could have loaded the stove up. I certainly could have gone for a top-down burn and vertically stacked a whole lot of wood in the stove. And I'm going to do that at some point, probably one of the demonstrations I'll do. Or I could have just lit a little bit of kindling in the bottom and then fed it in through the, the side, which is more or less what I'm going to be doing here. I started with the, what I have because I wanted to get it going because those deer flies are all over me. But once this catches, as you can see, it's not as smoky as I think I would have liked it to have been. But I, I could throw some green stuff on, I guess, to make it a little bit smokier or some wetter wood on. But uh, I don't think it's necessary now. I think there's enough smoke coming from that to, uh, to drive off the flies or what few flies are left. But this is huge. You know, I'm back oh, almost three feet and I can feel the heat coming off this. I mean, this is who needs a, a campfire when you have something this big? This is enough to heat. You know, I think when it comes winter time. I'm going to find that I don't, I don't even need to have an open fire in a pit. This will be more than enough. I'm going to let that die down a little bit. Of course, it's just burning 
dry softwood twigs right now and then I'm going to start feeding in some hardwood splits that I have right here. And I think it's starting to die down a little bit now. I had I put the crossbars on before I lit the fire. As you can see, uh, there's different ways. They could have gone from any side to side. Uh, I put them on first because I wanted to, well, I wouldn't have gotten them on after I got the fire going. Um, you know, if you have a big pot, like a Dutch oven or something, you wouldn't need them. But with the small pot that I'm going to put on in a second, I need to have something. A small plane flying over tonight, or today. So huge pieces of wood. I mean, these are six inch pieces of wood and they just go inside with no problem at all. I mean, I could throw a few in through the top here, I guess. All right, that's enough to get this going. Let me throw the pot on. So the pot I'm going to be using today, it's just one that I take out often, only because uh, it's, the, again, it's the one I take out this often, is my 12, me 12 centimeter zebra pot. But look how that stove just swallows that pot up. I mean, that gives you an idea how big that stove is. I, I could put a much larger pot on top of this. I mean, you talk about something that would make a great barbecue. This is perfect. Okay, I'm going to let that burn for a few minutes. Well, actually, I'm going to have to let it burn out now. I'm going to use the water to make myself some coffee. And then we'll uh, close up with a few thoughts. Okay, so that was just a brief introduction to the Flex Fire 6 premium system. As I mentioned, it's a combination of two full stoves, the Flex Fire 4 and the Flex Fire 6, having six sides, plus the extra plates that give it options in terms of how it fuses fuel from gas stoves to alcohol stoves to solid fuel tablets. Yeah, it's a very comprehensive, complex stove, at least on initial observation. I mean, when you understand how it goes together and you start playing with the options that are available to you, it turns out to be a very versatile stove. But again, this is not a long-term use review. I'll wait again for quite a while yet. And I'll, as I mentioned, I'll probably put together a two or three part series where I can show you each of the options that go with the FlexFire 4 and the FlexFire 6. Maybe we'll get out and do some barbecuing or some steak grilling on top of it with some charcoal. We'll see. I think there's a number of things that I could show you yet with this stove. Okay. Okay, if you have any questions about the Flex Fire 6 Premium System, then please put them in the show note or in the comment section below. But until I come back with another video, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.